Good morning. To those who are gathered here and to those who are joining us by stream, I want to begin by thanking Christine and Ned for that musical uh, offering that they've made to us this morning and the, the beautiful line that we sing and we pray, which is just what we're doing here. We're here to sing and to pray. So let us, let us as we gather in prayer, open with singing uh, what uh, across the country, when they vote on people's favorite hymns, is certainly in the top 10, Morning Has Broken. <laughs> God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of Amos. This is what the Lord showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And he said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings in that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this. You that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may, fall, so that we may sell grain and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, 
and practice deceit and false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account and everyone mourn who lives in it and all of it rise like the Nile and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or thirst for water, but a hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. The word of the Lord. Let us say together Psalm 52. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor, O worker of deception. You love evil more than good and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all the words that hurt, O you deceitful tongue. Oh, that God should demolish you utterly, topple you and snatch you from your dwelling, and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble, and they shall laugh and say, This is the one who did not take God for refuge, but trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly, fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, 
warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. These words are spoken in the name and the love and the power of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning again to all of you gathered here and to those of you who are streaming in today. So this is Martha and Mary Sunday. This is just five verses of scripture which speaks about 5,000 volumes about our lives. This is a universal and timeless story. If you think about it, Mary and Martha, who were two real people, would be utterly dumbfounded that 2,000 years later, we are talking about them. They lived in a small little village of Bethany on the back side of the Mount of Olives. But Mary and Martha, as you know, for all of us, have become icons in paradigms. They have become, in Christian shorthand, the active life and the contemplative life. They have become something of spiritual yin and spiritual yang. In the story of their gathering uh, at the dinner and what they do at the dinner is a story that we all know. This story happened to me just the other night. We had an impromptu gathering at our house and I cooked dinner and I missed that all that fun before dinner where people sitting outside having a glass of wine, enjoying each other's conviviality. And I was inside preparing things. And I cooked the dinner and I sat down. And, and I felt like by the time I sat down, everybody was saying, oh, that was great. Hey, I've got to run. And, uh, and then later, I was, uh, at the, I was cleaning up and I was at the sink. And I was thinking about this because I was Ajida. And I said, hmm, I sacrificed myself for the group. Don't you love that word, sacrificed? I sacrificed myself for the group, and I was so not happy about it. And I was kind of laughing at myself as I was doing this, but I was really kind of unhappy, too. Now, this is the type of story where people take sides. And you'll notice that even Jesus takes sides. In John's Gospel, we hear that Jesus loves Martha, but in this case, he chooses Mary. Now, my experience of being in church for a long time is that by far the lion's share of people choose Martha. And as many of you know, we, uh, the clergy here, do a podcast, and the most recent podcast uh, was done on this with Reverend Elizabeth, Father Justin being on vacation. And my sister listened to the podcast, and I received this text message from my sister. Just listen to the podcast. Sorry to report, but I'm in Martha's camp. She was probably multitasking, making lunch, and listening. After all, the house couldn't be very big, so probably heard every word. Maybe she was also a little ADD and couldn't sit still and focus better when moving. Many things to consider here. Maybe not a good move to diss her sister in front of Jesus, though. 
And then there's this little <laughs> winking eye face. And that was followed by another text that said, somebody had to put the darn lunch on, exclamation point. <laughs> and then the next morning, I awoke to yet another text, capital OMG, exclamation point. The other thing I meant to say was that Martha showed her humanity by exhibiting what was probably a long life of frustrations with her sister, not contributing enough around the house, and she got slammed for it. Not good. Now, the rest of the text went on to talk about our family of nurture, my mother's family of nurture, and how that all worked out in family systems. Very, very funny text. But they all point to the fact that we're still living this, right? All this stuff is still going on in our life. And the result of which is Martha, who, you know, is her household. She runs the operation, but it leaves her, as Jesus says, worried and distracted. And we might also add dissipated, uh, disturbed, scattered, anxious, angry, fussing, and fuming. So uh, in these five little verses today, Martha has had it and she's hit the wall. And then she does uh, something that would, would shock the, the Middle Eastern sensibilities around hospitality of her day. She brings the guest into the household, into the issues of her family system. And one of the great lines of scripture is this. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? So in other words, she brings the guest in and dumps all of her emotional garbage on the guest. And then she tries to triangulate Jesus into solving her family system issues and says, tell her then to help me. This, this transaction here is, is a thing of beauty because it represents so often what happens in the real lives of real people. But as we all know, Jesus is a super hard guy to manipulate. If you read the scriptures and you look at it, there are a lot of people trying to manipulate Jesus and he will not have it. And so he lovingly and he gently chides her saying, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. Now, if you think about it, he might have said, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. But it's the second Martha, 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 that is so full of the fullness of Jesus responding to her emotions. So we take this story of real people having a real dinner with a real Jesus, and, and then we seek to make sense out of it and what it means for our lives and what it means for our spiritual lives. And so uh, we see that if Martha is attentive to the things of the material world, in this case, Mary is attentive to the things of the spiritual world, and we see this with Mary by the position of her body. The position of her body demonstrates the disposition of her heart. Mary of Bethany, as she is known, only shows up in two of the Gospels, here in Luke and then in John's Gospel. Mary is not in Matthew or Mark. And in Luke's Gospel, she appears here in the scripture we just read this morning. And it says that Mary sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. Now, shifting over to John's Gospel, we see Mary coming to Jesus. Now, let me set the scene for you. As you remember, in chapter 11, Mary and Martha have a brother named Lazarus. And Lazarus dies, and Jesus doesn't come right away. And then when Jesus comes four days later with his disciples, Martha goes out and launches herself to meet him first. And Martha confronts Jesus. And then a little bit later comes Mary. This is outside the household. And it says, when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet. Now then we have a third time. This is in the next chapter of John's Gospel where Mary anoints Jesus' feet. And you'll hear in these three verses that Mary is definitely Mary and Martha is definitely Martha. It says, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the house of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. 
There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. So that's Mary showing up in two Gospels, but three times being at Jesus' feet. And we all know that when you sit at somebody's feet, you recognize their authority, and you would like to learn from their wisdom. Now we know that Jesus weighs in with the Martha, Martha, and then he continues, there is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. So as we move Mary and Martha from being human beings into being paradigms, we have like Martha, the distracted disciple, Mary, the attentive disciple. We have Martha with many, many things on her mind, and we have Mary with one thing on her mind. We have Martha paying attention to the material world, and we have Mary paying attention to the spiritual world. And that's what Jesus will not take away from her, right? There are household duties and there are spiritual duties, but Jesus will not take away Mary's spiritual life. That's the thing he will not take away. Now, you've all heard a gajillion sermons on, on Martha and Mary, and every sermon says the same thing. So here comes the same thing, right? We are not Martha or Mary. We are Martha and Mary both. But it's also really clear that the dysfunction and the tension between Martha and Mary affect both our outer lives and our inner lives. So most of us are Martha in our outer lives. There's a lot of meals to put on. If you ever take a look at how much time it takes to prepare, eat, and clean up three meals a day, it's shocking, particularly if you have a lot of people in your household. It's crazy how much time we spend just literally feeding ourselves and keeping the kitchen clean, never mind shopping. And so most of us in our daily life are distracted and anxious, and we find it really hard to be merry and to stop dead and sit at the Lord's feet and listen. It's very hard for us to do that. But not only does this Mary and Martha thing affect the way we live our lives, it also affects very deeply, and perhaps even more so, our inner lives. So we all have an inner Martha and an inner Mary, and the dysfunction between our inner Martha and our inner Mary uh, is, is shockingly present in our consciousness and in our psyche. And so if we are trying to choose to sit at the feet of Jesus and to exercise our inner Mary, I suggest two spiritual approaches to this. Now the first is to get a Bible, uh, particularly the Gospels, and to read the Gospels, say, okay, Lord, I'm sitting at your feet, even if you're sitting in a chair, I'm sitting at your feet and I want you to talk to me. And then you just read the Gospels and you try to read the Gospels more with your heart than your head, but you listen, you're attentive, it's about listening and you listen for a word. Is there something as you read that pops out to you? And if you do this regularly enough, you will see that there are things that leap off the, leap off the pages and speak to you. This is the lively word. The second uh, discipline is for you to, to seek Jesus, who is the teacher within, with a practice of what be, might be known as Christian meditation, or centering prayer. The podcast that's going to be coming out next week uh, uh, is done by Elizabeth and me. Father Justin is still on his break. Uh, and it is about prayer. And the last half of that podcast is about this Christian meditation or centering prayer. Now, as we all know from trying it or doing it, that in Christian contemplation, we are about the practice of de martha er ing our lives. And it's really hard to de martha our lives because anytime we seek to be quiet, inner Martha makes a lot of noise and inner Martha can take a really, really long time to settle down, right? So every time you sit at the feet of Jesus 
and you try to exercise your inner Mary, Martha intervenes, interrupts, disrupts, and seeks to take over and be the center of attention. Anytime that's not the case, you just have to count yourself lucky and try not to think about it, because if you think about it too much, Martha comes into the inner room and takes over. We know that when we seek to be quiet, that our worries, that we're distracted, we're dissipated, we're, you know, we're disturbed, we're scattered, that all comes to us. And when we try to fight that, what we find is that our inner Martha can get angry with us and fuss and fume. And the inner Martha might sound something like this while you're trying to sit in quiet at Jesus' feet. Do you not care that you have a lot of things to do? You have responsibilities. You're up early. You could be productive right now. If you were working, by the end of the day, you'd be less anxious. You could get your to-do list done for once. Do you think anybody cares that you're sitting at the feet of Jesus? There's stuff to be done. Do you think it doesn't count if you're doing things for Jesus while you're sweeping the floor or doing the shopping? And if you do not get up and get on with it, I am going to make you miserable. I am going to make so much noise that there is absolutely no way that your time of so-called quiet will be quiet. And you could just flip on Instagram. This is what our inner Martha says to us every time we try to be quiet. It takes serious intention to pay attention to Jesus and to listen to him. And in the, fam in the story, I mean, Jesus intervenes for Mary. And it seems like, wow, man, Mary's got Jesus intervening for him. But the truth is, that's what we need. We need Jesus to intervene for us because there's no way that we are going to easily defeat our inner Martha. But we know that if we sit long enough and we tell Martha to chill for a long enough time, we know that you will feel less worried, less distracted, less dissipated. You'll feel less disturbed. You'll feel less anxious. You'll feel less angry. The, 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 the benefits of, of, of settling down are incredible. If you want to know, just go home and plug in a top 10 benefits of, of meditation. Uh, I mean, it lowers your blood pressure. It does incredible things for us, and yet it's so hard for us to do. And yet we know that when we do it, and we particularly follow a discipline of Christian meditation, in other words, we're not seeking just to, to quiet our inner waters. We're seeking communion with our Lord, which is a major difference. We know that you will feel more grounded. You'll feel more centered in your life. And we all hit high seas in life. And if you've ever been out on the water when the water gets crazy, I mean, I, I get really scared when the water gets crazy and I'm out in a boat. I just, I just don't like it. But what we know on the high seas of life, it's like having a deep centerboard. Instead of going, whoosh, 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 we just do this because it settles us down. We know that when we spend time in quiet at Jesus' feet, we lead our life from the inside out rather than the outside in. And I remember years ago being in a retreat with a monk, and he said, you know, if you don't do it, guess what happens? 80 years go by, and what did you do? You got up in the morning, and you did your to-do list, and then you died. I was like, holy smokes, that's what it's all about? And he was talking about taking time out. And when we take a time out, what we find is that we have a spiritual river that meanders and runs through our soul. So while our bodies are being bashed about in the material world, deep within us, there is this stream of grace that just flows. Now you may know or remember that at the end of the book of Revelation, there is a river of life that runs through the holy city, the new Jerusalem, and along the banks of the holy city grow these, grow these great trees of life. And so it is with us. When we have those waters in our soul, we find that, that spiritual things bloom in our lives. It's just a beautiful thing. 
So when we take our time in quietude with our Lord and we're able to beat back that inner Martha, we find that we are more intimate with our Lord. I mean, the ultimate goal and the ultimate reward of sitting at the feet of Jesus is the soul satisfaction that comes with encountering the living God, with encountering the living Christ, with the divine presence deep within us becoming a reality. St. Paul is really clear that on our own, we just can't make everything better. This was the so-called Pelagian controversy uh, in the 300s, late, late 300s, 400s, between St. Augustine and Pelagius. We need the grace of God. And when we come in communion and touch with the living God, that is what transforms our life. That's what forms us and helps us to grow into the full stature of Christ. And so back to the sermon that you all knew was coming. We are all both Mary and Martha together. You, you can't be one or the other. That would be like saying, I'm only gonna be right-handed or I'm only gonna be left-handed. That would just be dumb, right? Uh, but we also have stronger sides. Most people are not perfectly ambidextrous. Just take a look at a basketball player. So there are household duties and there are spiritual duties. We need to do them both. This is, this is not a question of either or. This is a question of both and. The highest goal for us is to be, of course, contemplatives in action. And to be contemplatives in action, that means we need to get Mary and Martha to get along. Mm. So, good luck. Probably spend the rest of your life, just as I'll spend the rest of my life, trying to get Mary and Martha to get along. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all of reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. 
we give thanks for the birth of Grace Quigley Dunlap, daughter of Maggie and Andrew Dunlap, granddaughter of John and Kathy Ewing, and for the birth of Rose Marie Powers Giuseppe, daughter of Tara and Charlie Giuseppe, friends of Father Justin and Jewel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Tom, Randy, Elizabeth, Lorelai, Norman, David, Wheezy, Harry, Teddy, Yvonne, Stuart, Charles, Lee, Parker, Joby, Rocco, Lily, Ellen, Anna, Allison, Miller, Raymond, Gail, Hannah, Terry, Sydney, Melissa, John, Scott, Mike, Dave, Jock, Janet, Anna, Emmy, Lori, Anne, Julia, William, Lee, Morgan, Susan, and Len. We remember all those caught in the crosshairs of violence, the people of Ukraine and all victims of war, those affected by gun violence in our own nation, and all those walking today through the valley of the shadow of death, that you, Lord, would be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning again. Just a few notes about our life together. I, you know, we come and we're attentive to the word of scripture. I don't know if you caught in the letter uh, that was read this morning from Amos and it said, I will bring baldness on every head. <laughs> See, it's all there in the scriptures. I was wondering why I went bald, so now I know. I, if you're new or visiting, I extend a particular welcome to you uh, and uh, invite you into our community of love. So uh, just a few notes about our life together. Jesse, today's your birthday. Jesse, stand up so we can celebrate your birthday. Okay, Jesse, stand up so we can clap. Uh, uh, Jesse's had a lot of great things happen in his life lately, Jesse, so we're so pleased you're with us. Uh, also to note that, uh, as you know, in the summertime, we're gathering outside for a delightful moment to share uh, a second sacred meal, a time for us to be together. Jesus ate with people. Uh, and so today, as I understand it, Fiona, as you came in and you missed the absolutely gripping sermon, 
uh, that's a joke, uh, that Fiona and Rabina and Margo and Mickey are, you're, you're being Martha today, and we're grateful to all of you for putting on the coffee hour. Uh, and just after I got done promoting Mary, we need a few more Marthas to sign up to put on the coffee hour. You know, I really should have had a different sermon to make that pitch, but you know, what the heck, such is life, right? So uh, I know that uh, Emily and James are away and we need a few more folks. Uh, if you're banging around the building now, you'll notice that uh, our hallway, some of the hallways have no carpeting in them. We've taken up the asbestos tiles and we're laying down uh, new carpets in the coming weeks. Uh, in addition, we're super grateful to the, those who volunteer to sing here this morning. Invite all of you to go back behind uh, the Reredas and to sing with the choir. And if you have children, you'll note also that uh, an email has gone out about singing in the children's choirs. All the kids who sing with the maestro love it. And Ned not only teaches them to sing, he teaches them to sit up, he teaches them how to walk, uh, and he teaches them to pray. I mean, this is really a beautiful thing that he's about. So I invite you to participate in all of that. There are many, many offerings of our life together that count a lot, and one of them uh, is that uh, Carolyn Brokaw and the folks from Dunbar Educational Consultants uh, have invited uh, people uh, for today and next week, if you have a rising senior, those of you, if you have a junior in high school, uh, to work with them to fulfill the Common App. I said a few weeks ago that applying to college was like hitting yourself with a hammer over a long period of time. It's really hard for kids to apply to college nowadays, and it's a beautiful offering that Caroline makes. Uh, there is other things I recommend the podcast to you as part of your, as part of your sitting at the feet of Jesus. Uh, as you know, uh, there's been new news uh, uh, out in the world about the vast expanse of interstellar space, and that's actually part of our of our, our Eucharistic prayer as we give thanks to God for it all. That's Eucharistic prayer C, it's in your order of service. We ask that you participate as we make Holy Communion together. As you know, we receive communion around the railing and we no longer intend. Now walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you call us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Rachel and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Our Savior Christ has taught us we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be peace. The holy gifts of God for the holy people of God.
Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today I invite Jim Betridge and Deb Lukes to come forward. They're going to visit Bob and Lee Bouton with Holy Communion today, with sending all of us our love to them as well. So please join me in our sending forth prayer in your leaflet. We send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, for we all share one bread, one cup. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God who abounds in love for you and for all creation. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. make disciples who live a deeper life in Christ, a more holy communion with one another, and a greater love for the world. Thanks be to God.